We believe as Muslims that any child in this world, whether they're Eskimos, whether they're Chinese, whether they're Hindu, whether they're atheist, as long if they die before the age of puberty, guaranteed paradise. Yeah, they have got no accountability whatsoever on them. It's when they reach the age of understanding and they get to choose from themselves that then accountability comes on. That's when the religion kicks in. So if they were brought up in a Christian family, Hamzamiyat, we believe as Muslims that if any child if he dies before the age of puberty, paradise is guaranteed. This is what he said. Okay, let's see what the Hadith says. Aisha, the mother of the believers, said that Allah's messenger was called to lead the funeral prayer of a child of the Ansar. I said, Allah's messenger, there is happiness for this child, who is a bird from the birds of paradise, for it committed no sin nor has he reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, but adventure, it might be otherwise, because God created for paradise those who are fit for it, while they were yet in their father's loins, and created for hell those who are to go to hell. He created them for hell while they were yet in their father's loins. That is Sahid Muslim. Another hadith says the same thing. Aisha, the mother of the believers, reported that a child died, and I said, There is happiness for this child, who is a bird amongst the birds of paradise. Thereupon, Allah's messenger said, Don't you know that Allah created paradise, and he created hell, and he created the dwellers of this paradise, and the denizens of this hell? According to the hadith, a baby can go to hell, according to your prophet. So, you are deceiving people, claiming the complete opposite. Let's so, carry on. So, why don't you believe there's a creator? There's no evidence. But that's not a reason not to believe in something. Of course it is. Okay, what if the nature of this creator... Okay, what evidence would you accept? What well, if God parted the, parted the clouds now and came down and said, yes, oh, I'm God, then yes, I believe You'd believe? God. Probably, yeah. Why don't you believe in purple elephants from outer space? Do you believe in purple elephants from outer space? No, but why should why I? Don't you? Why should I? You just said that the absence of evidence is not a reason to not believe in something. So the other gentleman then asks you why you don't believe in purple elephants, out of space elephants. And you say, why you don't? <sighs> okay, please continue. It's the same thing. It's the same. Really? Thing. Why is it? No, said, There's evidence of purple no, elephants from outer space. No. <laughs> so why should I believe in them? <laughs> because you just made this statement, guys. These guys are. Oh. <laughs> okay. Look. Look. What he said a couple of seconds ago. Why don't you believe there's a creator? There's no evidence. But that's not a reason not to believe in something. <laughs> of course it is. Okay. Hamza Miad is. It's like a goldfish. He says something, and after three seconds, he's, he forgets what he said. After three seconds. He's got the memory of a goldfish. And this specific goldfish, <laughs> what was the name? Bubble-eyed uh, goldfish. <laughs> Hamza Miyad has the memory of a bubble-eyed goldfish. Evidence of a creator, so why should he believe? Well, yeah, there, well, how can you say there's no evidence of a creator? I've not even told you the evidence of a creator. Because <laughs> you can't. You don't have any evidence. Listen, there's, no, there's no evidence. There's no evidence. I said to you, I can't prove it. I can provide my evidence. You can believe in it. No, no. Belief is not reality. Okay, I can provide my evidence. He can provide his evidence, and we can look at the evidence and decide who has the stronger evidence. Clearly. So evidence matter after all. <laughs> this guy, this guy is debating himself essentially. He he says something and then he plays. <laughs> he he goes out of himself and plays the uh, interlo his interlocutor. He says, "But evidence doesn't matter." And then he responds to himself. But then we can see who has the uh, strongest evidence. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, <laughs> The, the other people around him think that they, he's talking to them, but he, he sees dead people. <laughs> so, <laughs> do, you know, do, do you remember a movie, The a Beautiful Mind, that was, 
was what was seeing people that weren't there and he was <laughs> speaking. <laughs> anyway, please continue. So right now, his evidence is he doesn't know. That's his evidence. <laughs> right now. No, no, now, he might bring something more substantial to the table, I'm not sure. Valid. <laughs> yeah. I'm an agnostic. I don't know. Right, right. I don't know. But, all right, so in a court of law, evidence know. is not, no I don't know. No Did he do it, my lord? I don't know. In a court of law, somebody murders someone. So you imply some kind of urgency that it's not there. Although whether God exists is a very nice philosophical question. The agency you like to imply comes from your mythology, that there is an afterlife and we must avoid hell. Okay, so this fake urgency you try to impose, you, it, it derives from your fairy tales. So there is no urgency. This f the, 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 there is no urgency in the question whether God exists. Why is that? Because if there was an urgency, your God wouldn't have played hide and seek. Let me give you an analogy. L let's imagine a firefighter. A firefighter. Start playing hide and seek. Oh, hello, I'm hiding. Hello, hello. And start playing other childish games. He plays the broken telephone. You said, excuse me, it, it, it's a, uh, there is a fire here. What? Say that again. There is a fight here. Ah, look what we will do. We will play the broken telephone. You will say, you will ask this question to the next person. The next person will, ask, will say that to the next person. And finally, you will say it to me, and then I will respond. Okay, if a firefighter starts playing childish games, then he cannot convince people that there is an urgency. The same goes for your God. If there was an urgency, he shouldn't have played hide and seek. He shouldn't have played silly childish games of broken telephones in the Hadith. Okay, so you imply this urgency, which there isn't any urgency in the question whether God exists. It's a very good philosophical question, but you add the urgency, Hamza Miyad. Okay? So he couldn't heal, he couldn't raise the dead, he didn't, he wasn't all knowing. So tell me the qualities of Jesus that he possessed that made him God. Perfect. It was perfect. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. perfect what? Perfect in all, in all, his, in all, in all his ways. Oh, really? As man. Yeah. In what way? Yes, it was. In what way? He abused, oh, anyway. in what way? He, he, he verbally abused the Jews. He verbally assaulted the Jews. He told them, yeah, because what they were doing, they were hypocrites. Is that perfect? No, 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 because they said that they were serving God, but yet they were hypocrites. So what's your definition of perfect? And yet he called it. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. He said, no matter what happens, the Holy Prophet was a human being from the day he was born to the day he died. He is therefore imperfect from the day he was born to the day he died. Therefore, he is an imperfect convert. What did he do? With anything what was his imperfect actions? He special, he? He said, the same person who deemed Jesus imperfect for a noble act he did in the temple, now he cannot fathom what were Mohammed's imperfect actions. Let's remind him some. The Jewish genocide, the massacre of Banu Kuraiza. Mohammed's ordered assassinations. Mohammed torturing people. Mohammed and female captives of war. Mohammed the slave owner. Mohammed the womanizer, the adulterer, the thief. Robbing caravans. Marrying his adopted son's wife. Lying to his wives. The list is endless, okay, we don't have time. Okay, you get the picture. Is it mere stupidity that makes Muslim apologists so blind, spiritually blind? Or maybe there is something darker 
going on. And we're here to demonstrate, and what this is what we've done every time on the arena. We're here to demonstrate there is no claim against Islam that can be substantiated, which can be upheld, to challenge the reality and the truth of Islam. Do you get me? It, they, they, sure. they, people have tried and failed. People might come to try to present. Okay, we accept your challenge. Let me disprove Islam with the first eight words of the Quran. Hamza. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful. Islam disproven. What entirely merciful? He burns people for eternity. What entirely? Entirely merciful. He's entirely unmerciful. When he burns people for eternity, he's entirely unmerciful. So, Islam disproven from the, fir the first eight words of the Quran. Okay. In the name of Allah, the end. Oops. Disproven. Okay. That was <laughs> Islam. It cannot even handle itself to pass the first eight words. Okay. Don't confuse your delusion with reality. Okay. Anti-evolution. Um, I don't think we've made anti-evolution. Has videos, anyone maybe. here made anti-evolution videos? I, I haven't. This universe evolved by itself from monkey evolution or all of this business. Well, yeah, yeah. Random. I, 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 that didn't add up to me when I thought about it, when I reflected on it, when I looked at the, the uh, communities of bees and ants and all of these things. So that how can all this have evolved from one common ancestor? It just made no sense to me. Yeah? So then when I looked at it, I realized there must be a creator. Hashem, Sharif, we, we, we had a... Uh, we had right. four. <laughs> Don't watch them. Daniel, Gilly. Daniel, you're the one, man. Yeah, Daniel is the guy who makes the argument that people who believe in evolution are indoctrinated. When in fact all the evidence or the evidence are against evolution. And in the same video, guys, after a couple of seconds, he says, we reject evolution because of, of the Quran. <laughs> in the same video, after a couple of seconds, he accused atheists of being blind, believing in evolution because of indoctrination. And after a couple of seconds, he makes a statement. Uh, I reject evolution because of the Quran. Okay, we are talking about this kind of video. Okay, <laughs> that is the next video I will do. <laughs> it will be <laughs> on, on, on this on this video. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My um... <gasps> and the earth is standing and it's flat, is it true? Okay, first you tell me why you left Islam. <laughs> Hamza, I'm answering you because I studied Sharia and when you study okay. Sharia, you uh, Okay, uh, studying Sharia has nothing to do with the Quran talking about the no, sun and the moon. a lot of things, first of all. Uh, okay, Mariam, 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 just tell us why you left Islam. What convinced you Islam wasn't true? I'm answering, my dear. I'm telling you. Is you know, you're asking me questions. No, no, no. You're, no, no, you're asking. The you, Quran, it failed in proving in science. It was claiming it has science, but it's failed. Where, where it does the Quran claim? Okay, where does. Now she's messed up now because she gave me something to bite on. And what she said, the Quran is claiming to be a book of science. Now we all know the Quran doesn't claim to be a book of science. So now I begin to torture her. Not too long ago. The Quran has what's called a falsification test. Now this is miraculous for any religious book to have a falsification test. <laughs> to this day, masters of languages, computer programs, whatever, cannot do that. But it's not a fair challenge to me or you, because you're not Arab and I'm not Arab. Yeah, fair enough. So the second falsification test that the Quran puts in, which you can check out, Allah says, if this book was written by any other than the Creator, inside you shall find many contradictions and error. Because men make mistakes. Not too long ago. 
Now this book is revealed over 23 years. And this book is not just gibberish. This book is historical. This book is contains elements of science. Now the amazing thing about science, science is transitory. Science is theory until history reaches a period where they can test the theory and then they can see whether they were right or not. And then if they're wrong, they tweak it and they change it again. Well, every single thing in the Quran that was uh, revealed 1400 years ago, scientifically, is correct today. So the question we have to ask... Not too long ago. Ask ourselves, how could a man be so confident that everything he wrote in 7th century would be correct, read by today? This is evidence. See, you can only prove some of the science of the Quran wrong in the future. So if you speak to the, a companion of the Prophet and said, or oh, when a fetus forms in the womb in the stages of the pregnancy and the zygote and this and that and you know talk about um, the shape of the embryo and this and that this couldn't be qualified or confirmed because you need an electromagnetic microscope to actually see the shape and of everything you can't it's invisible to the naked eye okay up until the end of the 19th century the european scientists believed that the sperm carried a mini embryo or the egg had a mini embryo already inside it okay but the quran described the, the process exactly as it is today. Not too long ago. Does the Quran claim it had science? Is Earth flat? It's not. Does the no? Where does the Quran? No, no, no. Where does the Quran claim it contains science? Ajaz al Quran al Ilmi. That's in Arabic how we say it. Where does the Quran make the claim? This is a book of science. Really? al ajaz al ilmi have you heard this word before? Oh, oh, okay, Mariam, Mariam, Mariam. Does the Quran, you just said the Quran says it's a book of science. Where does the Quran make such a claim? I'm telling you, Muslims claiming... When I'm interested in what Muslims... I'm not interested in Muslims. You said the Quran claims it's a book of science. So I'm asking you to show me in the Quran, because you're Arab, show me any with any surah of the Quran that makes the claim that this Quran is a book of science. This brings me to my third point, which is the argument of the physical coherence of the universe which is a Quranic argument, because today I'm just going to be sticking with the Quran. Didn't it speak about Earth? Not about interested what it speaks Earth. about. You said the Quran makes the claim is a book of science. Do you want to take that claim back? I don't mind. Can I ask you this question? Because you know... In this episode, we're going to be looking at the sixth chapter of the Quran, verse 111. See, in this verse, God shows us or highlights one of the main reasons why people deny him, why people reject him. And Allah shows us that it's not for rational reasons. It's not for, for based on evidence. It's not because they can't see God. See, Allah says, even if he had sent down the angels to these people and they could see the angels and they had the message, the Quran with them, or the dead started to speak to them even, or even if God brought all of his creation together and put them in front of these people, they will still oh, deny in Allah. Do you, want to, do you want to take your claim back? No, 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 Do you want no, to take no. your claim back? I'm, I'm answering you and you go back again to ask me the same question. No, 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 no. no. Mariam, 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 Mariam. You came on here thinking you had something to say. Okay. You know over here? Because your people was coming to our... I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm, yeah, my point. Look, and you're here, you're here. Hamza is the greatest man to answer your questions. I have questions. Uh, uh, yeah, your questions are stupid. Based oh, no, upon no, false no, premises. No, 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 no